everyone, welcome back, and uh, I apologize if you might be getting a little tired of some of the butterwort videos that I've been putting up, but I've been having new species bloom, and so trying to take advantage of those. And as such, I've actually got another species here for you. This one is not a Mexican butterwort like many of the ones I've shown so far, but instead one of the uh, southeast uh, warm temperate U.S. species. And this is Pinguicula planifolia. These guys are native to uh, a fair stretch of the southeastern U.S. in the Florida Panhandle and surrounding states where they grow in a lot of the longleaf pine savannas, particularly in areas that get really wet and flooded. This is actually a species that, unlike a lot of butterworts that we're familiar with, it likes being flooded. These guys will actually grow in places where they'll be submerged underwater for sometimes months out of the year. and interestingly enough, can still capture small insects underneath the water there. So these guys uh, grow to roughly six, eight inches across, and unlike a lot of their relatives, they like to grow with very, very flat leaves kind of pressed into the ground, as you can see in the video here. And uh, those leaves spread out, kind of press flat into the soil, and they develop this oftentimes very rich, almost meaty red coloration. Uh, mine are just starting to get that color back as they're under some brighter lights right now. And as summer comes along, hopefully that color will increase as well. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose for this rich color is, but it's quite unique amongst the uh, southeast U.S. butterworts. So, and then you can see on those leaves the little tiny glands that cover them as well. Um, <clears throat> Those are where the genus gets their name, Pinguicula, meaning little greasy one. Uh, small insects will land on those leaves, and they'll kind of dimple in uh, when the insects get stuck, and that creates kind of a little cavern for uh, juices to collect, a little cavity, and then it'll digest the insects. In spring, these guys will put up this really long, skinny flower stalk with a single little bloom at the top. Uh, the flower stalk itself is actually covered in glands. It can sometimes capture insects as well. But as it grows up, the actual bud kind of curves over so it's almost upside down uh, so that the calyx is actually on the top of the bloom. And it has this little yellowish spur that forms and a short conical uh, corolla tube. And then rather almost not quite unique in butterworts, but perhaps most uh, pronounced in the southeast U.S. group, is the five lobes that form the corolla of the flower have these really deeply notched tips so they actually have ten tips uh, spreading out on either side. These are kind of variable in how notched they are. Some of them can run almost down to the bottom of the lobe so it looks like it has ten petals instead of five. But they have this beautiful kind of lavender coloration to them and then darker purple inside. And then they have this little yellow and hairy palette that sticks out of the uh, center of the flower, kind of like a little tongue, and that actually kind of helps capture pollen in some cases. It's also an attractant for pollinators because it looks like pollen, so they come looking for being able to collect that. And so as the pollinator goes inside here, uh, a lot of times we're not entirely sure what pollinates them. It could be some of the small native bees or uh, gnats and flies but it'll push inside that corolla tube to get at the nectar that collects in the back of the spur. And then as it comes uh, back out, uh, as it goes in, whatever pollen might be sitting on its back gets rubbed against the little flap that you can see the stigma inside that flower. And then as it backs out, it lifts that flap up and gathers pollen as it exits uh, the flower again and flies off to find another one. I've come back in here uh, later in the night to show you guys an interesting habit of this uh, species, and actually some of its relatives, but it's really pronounced here, is in the evening the flowers of uh, Pinguicula planifolia actually kind of nod off. They droop downward and the petals kind of fold up uh, overnight, and then next morning it'll perk back up, facing outward, and the petals will splay out again. Uh, these guys grow all throughout summer, and then as winter comes in, they don't like um, the cold temperate butterworts of the far north. They don't form a hibernacula or anything. But rather, uh, what they do is they just kind of stay the same as they are here. Uh, in winter, when temperatures drop, uh, they just kind of slow down in growth. 
They're not really hugely frost tolerant, among the reasons why they grow low to the ground. They don't, temperatures don't get quite as cold when you're pressed right next to the earth, but they can tolerate some light frosts, uh, which they do throughout the year, because they do live in the same places that uh, American pitcher plants Saracenia do. So they will slow down in winter, they expect some cooler temperatures, and then uh, come spring again, they wake back up and start up growth right away. Now, this is a group of butterworts that is somewhat enigmatic uh, for growers, interestingly enough. There is one species, Primulifera, that is very common in cultivation because it also likes really wet, muggy soils, and it propagates itself really readily. But some of the other species, like these guys, not quite as much. So this is another one that actually does really well in the wet soils again, so might overall be fairly easy for people to grow. But it doesn't propagate itself quite as readily. It doesn't form those plantlets on the tips of its leaves like its relative uh, Primulifera does. Rather, these guys, if you want to propagate them, you have to either work with seeds, which I have not been able to test yet if these guys will self-pollinate or not, but I will very shortly. Uh, so either seeds or you take leaf pullings. You actually pull uh, the base of the leaf out from the plant and then set it in the soil to try and grow. Now to actually uh, do well with these guys, you get a primarily peat or sand-based soil. These guys don't really care either way. Uh, something fairly neutral, acidic, a uh, mixture of organic and inorganic, and you plant those guys in, they will send roots down to anchor into the soil. These guys have some fairly large roots, especially compared to their distant relatives, the Mexican butterworts, uh, which they use to anchor in there. And then this species in particular, you want to keep wet. Uh, keep the soil fairly saturated. It can dry out occasionally to get a little bit of air in there on uh, every now and again, but otherwise keep it wet. And sometimes these guys actually do well if you do flood them during summer. So actually covering them in water. So uh, if you have a pot like this where the soil is all the way up to the top, you maybe take that, put it in a larger container and fill that up. Or if you have a pot where the soil is actually down a little bit from the lip of the container, just fill it up to where it's full all the way to the top for a little while. And that will kind of mimic the natural environment that these guys experience. Uh, it's very important they need a lot of sunlight. Again, this is a species that should develop these like rich red leaves or at least have the red blushing like you can see on this one here. Um, if it doesn't have that, that means your light uh, needs to be increased. They can take all the way up to full uh, sunlight as well, so they're not terribly sensitive as long as you acclimate them correctly. And then during summer, of course, they like it warm. So down in the southeast, your average summer day is somewhere between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit with high humidity. And so that's what these guys are looking for. And then in winter, if you want to keep these guys long term and you want to see these beautiful flowers, it is very important that they do experience some sort of temperature shift. So it's 80s during summer. You need temperatures that drop at, down into the 60s or the 50s during winter, sometimes maybe even colder. Uh, occasional cold snaps down to almost freezing might help as well because that tells these guys that it's winter slow down growth go into kind of a pseudo dormant period and then that helps them kind of set and reset for the next season and will trigger development of these beautiful flowers come spring so very simple easy to grow butterwort and that's about all I have for you on these guys. I hope to be able to cover one or two of the other U.S. species. We've already got uh, Pinguicula cerulea is another plant that already has a video on the channel here. So do go and find that. Uh, it's another beautiful species related to this guy. Uh, there's a couple others that I still have to cover, but we'll have to wait to see if they decide to bloom again this year or not. But until then, uh, if you'd like to help support production of educational videos like this, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hcarlton. Uh, members there also get some exclusive benefits back, such as our monthly uh, seed contests that I run. Uh, otherwise, uh, find the stuff that are at my shop and uh, database. You can learn about the plants there and pick up a few cool things, carltoncarnivores.com. Uh, you can find me on uh, all various uh, social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, all at Carlton Carnivores to find more uh, little video clips and photos that I usually have some sort of uh, educational info attached to. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores.